Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 6, Episode 10. This is so great. Let's get started. And if you would consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe, that would be most appreciated. Now, let's get to the exciting part. Our first semi-finalist is this one. Here she is with her self-portrait. That's the picture she did to enter the competition. I have said before that I think she's very much influenced by David Hockney, the very famous painter who began in Britain and ended up in Los Angeles. And let's take a, just a quick look at the painting that she did that won her episode, which is on the right. We'll see that in a second. There's David Hockney in front of his portraits. You can see how similar her aesthetic is to his, as well as her color palette. So the she's a minimalist, but she, but um, which I really enjoy, and she makes exquisite choices. So that is finalist number one. Finalist number two is this one. Um, I'm going to call him Tyrannosaurus Rex guy. Uh, this is a fine portrait. I enjoy the humor of it as well. And um, and now the, here is the picture on the right that won in his particular episode that brought him to these semifinals. I was not a fan of the portrait that he did that day. It did not resemble the sitter at all. I also find the palette extremely dull. That's a choice, and I understand that that was a choice, so I'm just going to leave that here for now, and let's watch how this day progresses. The third semifinalist is this one. She's been on the program before, the first time without a self-portrait of a bird on her head. Of course, I love the humor of that. I'm very interested in seeing more of what she does. The picture on the right is the picture that won her, her episode. She uh, seems to always prime her canvas with that specific little reddish pinkish background and then allows it to um, show through, which I really enjoy. That is not something that I'm familiar with being able to do as a watercolorist, but I think it's extremely effective. I've seen some painters also do it with white and, and green. I don't know the reasons for that, but like I said, I think it does bring a certain glow to your canvas. Now, let's look back at the semifinals, if you didn't see that episode, so we can see how we got here. Elaine Page was the celebrity model for that program. Extremely poised and elegant woman. So, and I, I suspect that she was a good sitter for them. What I mean by that is I think she probably was able to maintain the pose and stay still. She just seemed to have that kind of energy around her. So, now let's take a look at the results of the semifinals, which is what brought these three artists to this place. There is the picture that the first semifinalist did of Elaine Page, as well as her self-portrait and the picture that won her her particular episode. The next one is also of Ellen Page. Remember, they had four hours in order to do those portraits. And then we can see the self-portrait. You're right, the self-portrait, the portrait that won her episode on the right, and the portrait that, of Elaine Page. I'm, um, this was a surprise to me. I was very surprised at, at the very strong contrast between the warmth of the background, and warmth and brightness of the background, and the dullness of the, and darkness of the front. I think it's very effective, but I just don't think it was finished. Here's our third semi-finalist. He is, again, struggling with getting that resemblance. So I, I have some real doubts about him going forward. But this program surprises me endlessly. And I do watch it with the sound off because I don't want to be influenced by the judges. Now, our celebrity judge, I mean, celebrity model for the day is Lim Sese. He's an author and a broadcaster. So... Uh, so let's take a look at him, and we're, I'm going to show his image again later, so you don't have to remember it. But that's who they're going to paint today in the four hours. And then part of the semifinals is that each one of these artists has a separate commission to do, which they can do within a two-week period. The first uh, commission will be of Willard Wigan. He's known for the world's and tiniest sculptor, which is so fascinating to me. And I inserted just a couple examples of what he does, but you might want to Google and take a look because your mind will be blown. <laughs> I, know, I thought small, small is one thing, tiny is another. Yeah, that's on the head of a nail or something. Oh my gosh. So, um, I, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. I haven't even gone down the rabbit hole of really exploring what he does, but 
uh, don't you love the whimsy of this? It's just, I, something about it is just tremendously delightful and also like, really? How, how in the world do you spend your days? Anyway, on to the next one. The next uh, commission is of Kim Wilkie. Kim Wilkie is a landscape designer and he is, uh, I, I'm not familiar with him, but um, he will be the commission that is, is done next. And here's the final commission, which is of Neves, Neves Berrigan Machacho, and she is a celebrity chef. So those are the three commissions. And um, we're gonna refer back to these pictures again, so you don't need to remember. But let's go back to real time, or as the program is in real time, and let's take a look at the judging. Now the first, ju the judging is of the four hours that they spent painting Lem. And he is going to pick one of these portraits to take home, which is an absolute honor, but does not have anything to do with the final judging of the competition. And if you win this competition, you then have a $10,000 commission to do of a celebrity, and that will be episode 10. And I am going to uh, cover that as well. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and we get our first look at what they've done. And it already looks very, very promising. <sighs> just, I want them all to win. So here's the first one up. This is our sort of minimalist. And just so that you can remember each one of these artists and what they're known for so far and what they did today. So here's the painting that she did of Lem. It, I find it pretty exciting to tell you the truth. I mean, I've, I've been enjoying her painting all along and, and I'm also thinking the judges are going to enjoy it. They do not like traditional painting in terms of old masters so looking for new voices and a modern take. And I do think there's a very modern take. Could she have done more with the suit perhaps? <laughs> you know, I mean, if you cover the head and just look at the, the suit, it's pretty minimalist. But if you take a look at her uh, website, which we'll talk about in a little while, uh, that's what she does. And I think it's extremely effective, especially when you pull back. And remember, this is a painting that is going to hang in a museum gallery next to other paintings. It has to read really well across a room, a large, a very large space. And again, to be able to do this in four hours is, is pretty darn amazing. So hats off, but I do think she's a front runner, again, because of her modern take and consistency over time, I have to say as well. Here is the artist, uh, I call him Tyrannosaurus Rex guy, and he always, he's been on the program before, and he's worn that shirt every time, or a shirt like it, so he's a real fan of that kind of weird black and white shirt, which makes him very identifiable. They hardly showed his painting that he did in these four hours at all. Once again, he did not nail a resemblance. Now, this is Portrait Artist of the Year, so I think nailing a resemblance is pretty darn important. I am not a portrait painter because I can nail a resemblance five out of eight times, but to be a portrait painter, you have to nail it eight out of eight times. So, uh, just on that, it's weak. The rest, I, I, I think, is, is just fine. I don't really have a lot to say about it. He's not much of a colorist. His, he does lean his palette toward the um, more uh, dark and muted colors. Here is our third semi-finalist, and let's take a close-up of what she did today. This is much more sculptural in terms of using your brush to create form, and I'm very appreciative of that. And it is a mix of somewhat minimalist, but also kind of looking for more detail, certainly than our first semi-finalist. She, I, I was surprised that she pulled back so much on color. It would have been very interesting to add some violets to the right side of the background, for example. You know, stay in that value range of brown, but perhaps adding some color that might enhance, especially where you go in, um, under the eye, uh, you know, above where the lid is. Just, oh, I'm dying to put just a a stroke of violet in there. But pulling away, it's extremely effective. Uh, she does have a tendency to not finish paintings as we've seen so far, but she only had four hours and look at the size of the paint of the canvas. You know, you but when you pick the format, I think you have to be pretty smart about, you, you know, using your four hours. But that's completely understood at this time. And um, I think she's a strong contender as well. So now we've seen what they did in four hours. And 
Lem is going to pick one of these paintings to take home, which, as I said, is an honor, but uh, does not affect the results of this program. This is the one he picked, the one that does not resemble him, and that's fine. I, you know, every uh, art is subjective. Whatever you want to have in your home, you should have in your home. Now we'll go on to the commissions. The commissions were, you have un, not unlimited time. You have two weeks in order to finish these commissions. So here is our first artist. And let's take a look at the painting that got her to this place, as well as her commission. So the commission is on the right. Oh man, I think that that is really beautifully done. And it's the most, the one on the right, the commission, is the most rendered that she has, painting that I've seen that she's done so far in terms of detail. So I think there's a real balance between, de uh, you know, we're really, really, good draftsperson in terms of getting a likeness and in terms of detail balanced against really simple forms uh, and minimalism surrounding it. Real smart use of vertical and horizontal, you know, especially when it comes to composition. Okay, here's the second uh, contestant in our finals and let's take a look. Uh, again, I call him Tyrannosaurus Rex guy. I did not like any of his portraits so far, but boy, I think that commission is really, really strong. He's still staying in those muted colors. I think it's adorable that he put his self-portrait down there on the right. <laughs> you know, uh, so appreciate the humor. Um, as I said, not, not a colorist. Uh, I guess you don't have to be a colorist, but I have to admit as a reviewer, and it's only my opinion, I do respond more to the use of color than what's happening here. It's just not my preference. But he did nail the likeness when, when push came to shove. Now, here's our third semifinalist. And uh, I've been a big fan of hers. I think I said earlier she's been on the program before, so, you know, I root for the underdog. There is the commission on the right and the painting that she did in the four hours on the left. I think they're both really, really strong paintings. I'm not so sure. Uh, you know, I just have to... I was going to comment on, you know, he was, it, I was going to comment on the context of the portrait on the right, but, you know, I have no business con uh, talking about that. There, uh, because I, as I said, I watch with the sound off and I'm sure there were conversations about symbolism and the reasons for it. So I'm, I'm not going to speak out of turn on that. Now we get to the final judging. This must be so incredibly nerve-wracking. I, I just I just can't imagine. And I admire all of these artists so much for doing this, and I thank them because it brings so much joy to my life. So here the three artists are. There they are with the portraits that they did in the four hours on the right on the left hand side, and the portrait and this commissions are on the right. Uh, I have, I have a pretty strong feeling about who the judges are going to pick here, but um, I've been wrong more than I've been right. Hashtag Joe is always wrong. And, um, and I think any one of them can handle the final task. So there are no losers, and I'm sure their careers all do very well from being on this program. And the winner is, not to my surprise, but indeed to my delight, the winner is Cristobal Blackburn. And we are going to be looking, um, we're going to be doing a recap of episode 10, which will be about her. We get to visit her studio, and we also get to see her do the final commission. And I, I think it's a really, really exciting episode. Uh, it's, you know, seeing an artist in their own environment is, is always um, kind of delicious. And we get to look at, you know, when you get to see an artist in their environment, uh, and what we're going to do here is, while I'm talking is just look at how she got to where she got to, you know, first the entry and then what she did today as well as the commission and then Ellen Page and the, as well as the painting that won her episode. But you get to see an artist in their own home and, and uh, most artists, their home seems to reflect them to some degree as well. And it was fascinating to, to kind of see um, her home, and also to see the art that she does in her studio, which is even more minimal than what she presented today. She is a very good designer. She's a very good graphic designer, I would say, as well as painter. So hats off to her, and we'll see more of her in episode 10. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.